your records you use a lot of F word, a lot of swearing and this and that. Again, is it necessary to get your message across to use that kind of language? Is it you use the sexual imagery, you use the shocking um, um, physical appearance, you've done some bizarre things on stage and you use um, profanity. All that necessary? Sometimes. I think sometimes when you're making a point, I don't think that my lyrics are uh, overlaced with profanity because I myself don't speak uh, using a lot of profanity in normal conversation. But I think when you're making something aggressive and you need to get a point across if you're angry, sometimes profanity is necessary. It's better to use a curse word than to hurt somebody else. Nor has a culture, especially a culture of young people, appeared to be so transfixed with death and darkness and evil and uh, do I uh, do everyone's, I speak the truth, Marilyn? Everyone's so afraid of death, I think, that they want to get closer to it by fascinating over things like serial killers and horror movies and car crashes. And that fear of that danger at these concerts and these mosh pits, I think uh, people get a sexual thrill from it. I think that excites people. Uh -huh. So there's erotica then, is a part of mosh? Well, maybe it's not erotic, but there's, there's, a, there's a term called you stress, and it's people's euphoric feeling over their stress. Yes. I think people thrive off of that. It's like amusement park, right at your own risk. You know that the concerts, there's a hint of danger. The people, uh, their impression of you is, uh, uh, many people like you, of course, that's your that you're fan base. Uh, other people are reviled and, and horrified by you and what you supposedly stand for. Is that a, a fair assessment of things? Well, I've always measured success not only by the amount of people that love you, but the ones that hate you, too. Because right. if you do something that everybody loves, it's not really worth too right. much. And do, do, you, do you like to, to get people upset? Do you, does that, is that part of what fuels you? Is... Um, I like to provoke people so they think. You know, I think that's, that's a healthy part of uh, entertainment, uh -huh. that you don't get too much from the Spice Girls. Marilyn, if we leave, would you bang this broad already and put her out of her misery? I misery. Feel, I, I feel uncomfortable. You do right now? Yeah. You're the one who you invited her over. Feel uncomfortable. I was about to get rid of her. And you I'm were... a real sensitive, nice, conservative guy, and you're making me feel uncomfortable. You want Marilyn to spank you? <laughs> Would you like that? Would that get you going? Of course. We'll get over his knee. Oh. Uh, He'll spank you. I'm not going to spank her. You're going to spank her. No, I don't believe in cor <laughs> corporal punishment. Want to put your hand in Marilyn's lap? He wouldn't allow me to. He's so loyal to his girlfriend. It's oh, it's, you can be loyal to your girlfriend and put a hand in your lap. Oh, my so God. Okay. I was going to say, <laughs> I think we found what he Nothing bad <laughs> about putting a hand in your lap. You just took her hand and put it in your crotch. I didn't put it in my crotch. Are you touching his crotch? Look, here's my crotch. It's there's her hand. A so now yourself and your girlfriend, uh, actress Rose McGowan, you get to be invited to uh, a lot of the big celebrity do's. You're on the A-list. Does that surprise you that you're now the celebrity couple? I don't know if we're accepted, or if we're looked at. You're cool to hang out with, though. Yeah. Uh, I suppose so, but uh, that's kind of the, the joke of Hollywood, and that's kind of you know where I was at with songs like The Dope Show. Mm. Kind of having a laugh at how silly all of that can be, mm. you know, rather than be overwhelmed by fame or being sucked into the nonsense of it all. And since we're on national television, I want to ask you. Okay. What standards do you have and where do you draw the line as far as what is good and what is evil? I have basic principles that kind of exist in all religions, Such even as? Christianity. Such as? Well, the p fundamentals, you know, you don't kill people, you, mm -hmm. you know, you, a basic good person. Okay, so... Probably you the line, same as yours. Do you... No, they're not the, the same. The um, <laughs> I guarantee they're not the same. Did you have a rib removed so that you could perform oral sex on yourself? Short answer is if I did, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> Long answer is I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> What's your biggest pet peeve about those who are trying to impersonate you? About what? Those trying to impersonate your style. Biggest pet peeve. I'm, I'm not aware of those. Well, I, I guess, you know, I don't really see uh, nothing. No, I don't really have a criticism towards it. I think that I actually if I went to a Halloween costume party dressed as myself, I would lose because I would confuse them. I don't know. I'm not really sure. That's a weird question. I don't I don't have any I don't like pet peeves. I have a, I have two pet cats. William and Rusty. You ever do any bass fishing? I don't like sports. Don't do any sports at all? I have one moral sports. You have one what? My only moral is I don't believe in sports. Oh is that right? 
Uh, not at all? No. You watch Those TV? kids used to beat me up when I was in No, the kids, they, oh, that must have been awful. Well, tell us about that. Would you, would you get pounded on a regular basis on your way to, like, is this in grade school or high school or? Well, to be honest with you, if I wasn't me, I would have beat me up too. I don't understand why you pick Catholicism, why you go with the, the cross, with God, with the Pope. To me, she has lost her religion because of watching, listening to him as well as other musicians. She's not a Catholic anymore. She has no religion anymore, and that's what's bothering me. Well, you know, it could be because it was your religion and it maybe wasn't supposed to be hers. I tried to look at the things that I was taught growing up about Christianity in a different way. You know, I looked at the image of Christ on the cross and the story of him as someone who was a revolutionary with dangerous ideas, and I started saying to myself, oh, I can relate to this story now. I'm not going to dismiss it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interpret it in a different way. So everybody should, you know, you have to be open-minded. I'm sure when you were young, you didn't want to listen to what your parents were trying to tell you to believe in.